and welcome back to Long Dog Book Reviews. I'm Shelby and this is Kiwi, and today we're going to be discussing Room by Emma Donoghue. But this novel came out in 2010 and spawned a movie adaptation in 2015, and it was the best adaptation I have ever seen. Emma Donoghue wrote the screenplay as well as the novel, and I think she actually wrote the screenplay before the novel was released. So it's an extremely faithful adaptation, and I would highly recommend both that and this novel. The book was recommended to me by my 12th grade English teacher. After I wrote a short story from the point of view of a four-year-old child, she thought that it reminded her a lot of this book, so of course I had to go out right away and get it. The review will contain spoilers for both the book and the movie, so just be ready for that. The book follows the story of five-year-old Jack, who is living in this 11 by 11 foot space with his mother and has never known anything else. And we, as the reader, are fully aware of what the situation really is, but Jack, of course, is not, given the fact that he's only five. And this story was loosely based off a real-life case. I'm not going to go into that too much, but I will provide a link in the description below of a podcast that goes into this case in more depth. The boy's name was Felix Fritzl, and he lived in a confined space for his entire life until he was released at age five. Because you see things through Jack's eyes, you have to kind of take a second where you're thinking, okay, if he's describing X, what's really happening is Y. Whereas with the movie, everything is just right in front of you. You see Brie Larson's haunted face, you see how claustrophobic room really is, you see old Nick, you see family members, and you can kind of, just everything is right in front of you. And it's easy to process, and that just makes it that much more easy, accessible, I guess? But yeah, so I know that a lot of reviewers were saying that the dialogue wasn't very convincing and that it was kind of hard to read because Jack's character sometimes sounds like a two-year-old and sometimes he has more adult kind of insights. But uh, I think that she deserves a little bit of slack because the further that you get away from your own demographic, the harder it is to write convincing dialogue, which is already fairly hard to write. Because you can write a story from the point of view of the opposite sex or someone of a different race or both and then wind up with a bestseller. But Writing from the point of view of a child who's never known anything outside of this one room is pretty close to impossible. So I'd say she gets credit for even just trying. The performances by Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay were next level. They both deserved Oscars, honestly. I guess they still can't hear us. Do you remember how Alice wasn't always in Wonderland? She fell down, down, down deep in a hole. Right, well, I wasn't always in room. I'm like Alice. Now we've got a chance. I'm scared. I know. But as for the book, there's quite a few differences. In the book, we see that Ma, in the movie, they give her the name Joy. We see that she had had a previous baby, a little girl who died at birth. And in the movie, this isn't mentioned at all. Uh, both the book and the movie are set half in room and then half in the outside world. In the book, it goes more into idiosyncrasies of Jack trying to adjust to life in the outside world. Uh, he doesn't really understand how things work. He doesn't really understand what manners are. And in the movie, it kind of glosses over all of that. But again, the performances more than make up for it. So I would highly recommend both. And I think she's getting tired. It's not the kind of story that lends itself well to a sequel. So I don't think there will be one. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I can say about that. And I think someone's ready for a nap. Bye.